These are elementary school children working at a competitive examination to try and gain a place in a secondary school. Up to now, only three out of 25, or 12 out of every 100, have had the chance of continuing their education until they're 16. The results of this examination, therefore, will give 12 children a better start in life than the remaining 88. Pay attention a moment, everyone, please. You should all have finished part one by now. I want you to turn straight over. Whether you finish part one or not, start part two. Right, turn over. Carry on. Billy here is like thousands of children, intelligent and eager to learn, but he may not manage to pass the exam. This first setback may seriously handicap his future chances. Yet he and the rest have to face this, the first important issue of their lives at the age of 11. But happily this will not be so for those who follow him, because in August 1944, Parliament passed a new Education Act. It became law in April 1945. Its object is to give all our children an equal and fair start in life. And one of its most important sections gives every child the right to a free secondary education. You could call it a children's charter. The idea is to encourage them in the things they can do, not handicap them for the things they can't. By this approach, education becomes an exciting research to find out for each child what he or she is best fitted to do in life. The children will start their careers on the right lines according to their talents and abilities. Now, how does all this affect Billy? Though he's no good at exams, he has an aptitude for engineering. This will be encouraged by his teacher, who will have a real knowledge of his character and needs. She will keep a record of his progress and development, so that when the time comes for Billy to move on to his secondary school, his headmaster will be able to advise him and his parents on what type of training he should follow. Well, Mrs. Mason, judging by this report, there's only one sort of school for Billy. You mean a, a technical college? Yes. Just the sort of school for a boy of his type. And he'll get a first-class engineering education. There aren't many technical schools of the sort Billy should go to, yet. But here is one attached to this big technical college near London. In future, these schools will be all on their own, specially designed for boys and girls. Here, Billy will go on with his general schooling, but he will also get a chance to develop his particular bent. His big moment will come when he can get down to the engineering shop. There he will be using tools, controlling machinery, and training his talent. And if after all he discovers he doesn't want to go into industry, he will still have the chance of changing his training. Engineering isn't the only technical subject. Boys and girls here draw from a model in the art room learning their craft together like the sculptors and artists of the past. I'm going to play a little piece by Beethoven, which is called a scherzo, really means a joke, mainly based on scales. who want to become typists and secretaries learn their job to music. Spare time can be spent in the library where the children are encouraged to widen their interests and develop a taste for literature. Billy may be able to go to an indoor swimming bath where he can dive, race, and learn to save lives. On with your head, one at a time, from that end, fall in head first. Right. Go. Leg. Leg. Come on, what's that? Head first. All these things will be the right of those who need them, not the privilege of those who can pay. But what about the other children? The farmer's son, for instance. The boy who takes the cows to milk before he goes to school in the morning. What's the act going to do for him? Education must be geared in with the life of the country. 
the life of our industries and of our land. So before long, there must be more agricultural secondary schools like this one in North Wales. Going to school among these hills, the boys get a general education, and with it they learn the science and history which lie behind good farming. Then, for a few hours every day, they put theory into practice under the guidance of men who have worked this land for a lifetime. But we're not all farmers. There is another boy, the bright boy, who never has to gaze at the ceiling for inspiration. He may want to go to a university in the end, or be a doctor, or teach at school himself. What's the best way of helping him? He'll probably go to a grammar school, a school like this one in Dorchester. We need not only skilled workers, trained engineers, nurses and farmers, but scholars as well, who will become teachers, scientists, lawyers and doctors. And the grammar school gives the best training for them. Now let's have one of the experts. Oh, no, you're not all experts. Kendall. The imperfect subjunctive of ferro. Ferem, ferre, ferret, ferremus, ferretus, ferrem. Yes, that's right. Now this one. <laughs> Lambert. Uh, imperfect of possum. Potty bam, potty bass, potty bat. Potty bam, potty bass, potty bat, cricket bat. Come on, Lambert. Potteram, potterass, potterat. Potteramus, potterassus, potterant. Yes. Hello, there seems to be something wrong here. I can't get the cork on very well, sir. Looks to me as if you want another pair of hands. Let me try. Oh, sir, there's a change taking place here. Well, carry on, and we'll explain it later. Sir? Yes, Ethel? There don't seem to be enough weights in the box. Don't seem to be enough weights in the box. There should be. Now, what you've done is to begin with weights which are too small. Take those off a moment. It's your usual fault of the beginner. Now we have music and the song. Now, come along, all of you. Black spirits and white, blue spirits and gray. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A without a name. <laughs> now we come to the majority of our children. The ones who haven't yet found anything they want to specialize in. Children like these from 10 Cambridgeshire villages. You can see them any morning on the school bus, on bicycles or on foot. Not yet little engineers, farmers or scholars, but just ordinary children who need a good all-round schooling to help them get the best out of their lives. helps them to overcome shyness and gives them poise and self-confidence. You won't give your promise or tear off your wig. I think you're simply disgusting. Or not, you are. You're a mean, horrid, unfair, hateful old woman, so they are. No, no, Dr. Manners. Put lots more into it. Full faces at her. You're a mean, horrid, unfair, hateful old woman, so they are. I'm not. I tell you, you are. I say I'm not, I'm not. Play acting helps children to take a keener interest in their ordinary lessons. Right, 25%.
the subject is now open for discussion. John, may we have your views? Mr. Chairman, my opinion is that the school leaving age should be raised uh, to give boys and girls a better chance to prepare for their future work. Thank you. Yes, Jack? I disagree with Mr. Mortlock because you can get an apprenticeship in almost every trade and you're earning a weekly wage at the same time. Yes, thank you. Betty? But what happens to the families of eight or nine? Parents can't afford to keep their children till they're 16. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Order, please. I wonder whether you realize that under the new education bill, the boys and girls will not only stay at school until they're 16 years of age, but will continue their general education at a young people's college on one day each week from 16 to 18 years. We could have had these colleges in 1919, but only a few towns got the scheme working. Rugby was one. These boys and girls come here one day a week in their employer's time. It isn't like going back to school. The college courses are designed to help them over the gulf between the schoolroom and the outside world. This is Joyce's kitchen at home, and this is how she would plan it if she were working in it. In place of the kitchen range, there's a gas stove. But the gas stove is a bit near the back door. I'm pleased to see that there's a refrigerator included, but if it were my kitchen, I think I should like it near the larder, have all food together. Can you tell me, sir, are the rights of the house increased if you build a garage next to it? Yes, Pierce, they increase because you're taking up additional ground space. Well, Watson? If an extra room is built on top of the house, does it make any difference to the rates, sir? Yes, it would increase the rates because it increases the floor space, but not so much as if you brought the room alongside the house where you would increase the frontage. Would you rather see a film that was written as a film, or the film version of a novel that you already have read? No. Well, I prefer to see a film written as a film. What are your reasons? Well, if you read the book and then see the film, you'll most likely be disappointed in it. Yes. Could anybody give me an example of that? Pamela? Yes, Jane Eyre. In the book, um, Blanche Ingram was described as a haughty aristocrat, and in the film she appeared to be a modern glamour girl. It's not that I don't like the job. I mean, the people are very nice, and they treat me all right. But it's when I get home at night I feel too tired to do anything. Well, Joan, I think the best thing we can do is to try and put you in touch with some lighter work. I'll ring through to the bureau downstairs and see what they can do for you. This juvenile employment bureau is run by the college. It is a branch of the Ministry of Labor for dealing with young workers up to 18. Attendance at the college is compulsory for one day a week, but it is open to everyone in the evenings. Then they are given every opportunity to run their own affairs and get up plays, debates, film shows and dances. I want to remind you that next week we shall be planning the activities for the evenings for next term. Bring this up at your own day committees and then we shall discuss all suggestions at our next meeting. Now is the question of the dance. And so they return to the adult world in which they work for four and a half days a week. A world of factories, machinery and conveyor belts. A hurrying world with no time for mistakes. A world in which ability without training stands little chance. Now, this new Education Act will help to give those with ability also opportunity.
The world that our children have to face will soon, we hope, be less difficult than it was for their parents. And with this weekly link with the county colleges or day continuation schools, keeping their minds alert and active, they can prepare themselves to lead full and interesting lives. These are some of the things the New Education Act is setting out to do. The best schools in the country have already shown what can be done. But alongside them are these. And these. And they are still in the majority. We must have new buildings, and most important of all, teachers of the right type who will make the pursuit of knowledge an exciting adventure. Every child must be given the chance to develop his talent and abilities to the maximum. This is the first condition of a happy and interested citizen. A thriving democracy depends upon each one of us thinking for himself and accepting his responsibilities as a citizen. Good citizenship depends upon good education that cannot be one without the other. We shall need more than laws to make this scheme a reality throughout the land. Don't say we can't afford it. The cost of four days of war alone would keep this scheme going for a year. We can afford anything when we are buying the future of our children. Let us make this new Education Act a real children's charter.